Welcome, everyone. We have Jamie, we have Jan, Nick, Michael, myself, we have Michael C., we have Dave C., Goran, and Antrenig. Uh, welcome, and it sounds like, Jan, you have a comment on the pressing 14 deadline uh, from a doc's perspective. One uh, simple command which could uh, still uh, profit from jail awareness would be setfib to uh, or add setfib support to jxec, maybe. Either way around would be useful. Because one of the problems is that while you can, by convention, start all processes in a jail with a certain routing table, and the processes will inherit their routing table, and you cannot really JXEC into a jail which does not have setfit installed and then use its routing table. And this, if you're only using basically VRF light, instead of full uh, VRF, okay, not FreeBSD syntax, but FreeBSD doesn't really have a terminology for this. You have that command. So uh, we having either uh, the JXIC command take a, a routing table or the setfib command know about a jail um, would make sense. Are you willing to investigate on what sure. might be involved? It should look similar to the changes in route. Uh, follow the route. I probably have type of, I typed this, but it's not showing up. Route changes as an example. And Michael, uh, you're going by today. Uh, Michael C., did, did you author the route changes, as I recall? Yep, and I think it's been committed. Oh. I oh. getting confused. Uh... So it sounds like uh, this review down at the bottom, has route-j has been committed? Yep, Alexandra uh, committed it. So now both if config and route uh, support a dash, uh, dash j option. Has wow. anyone looked into adding it to a uh, next step? No, we uh, talked about it, but uh, did anyone follow through? Uh, I don't know about that. Is there a reason why we want a next step to support this tree? Uh, for example, if you want to see the uh, so the reason is that the jail may not have its own netstat command if you want to. Uh, the reason why you would want to is, for example, if you have something like a pod as a jail manager and it wants to display the VNet enabled jails packet counters per interface and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the problem is that because the jail may only contain one executable and or a shared libraries or something, uh, it mm -hmm. will not include netstat. Mm. And uh, you can't, as far as I know, uh, read the performance counters or drop packet counters for uh, other uh, VNet instances without attaching to them because it's not, not an interface visible to you if it's an other VNet. You I can see. do that with NetGraph. NetGraph is orthogonal to that. Or did you meant to bring up that NetGraph, the uh, NetGraph commands should learn about? Yeah, well. yeah that'll, you, you can see the performance counters in, in or out of the jail. Oh, so uh, NetGraph is not, not VNet aware or not fully VNet aware? Uh. Or what? Well, I mean, the the instances are certainly isolated, um, but you can still check the performance counters using ngctl. The so that's how that I. In my experiment, it came up that uh, it just says that no such interface exists because just like if you run. If config dash L, it will tell you it's not your interface, even if you are the parent uh, of the jail, 
can't see the right. that's, interface. Yeah, that that's true. You can't use ifconfig for uh, performance counters, but it does have its own performance counter um, facility. Yeah, sure, but I wouldn't want to run everything through a dummy uh, VNet, uh, sorry, NetGraph uh, node just to get a packet count or a drop packet count or similar okay. things. So do we have a valid use right. case for a NetStat that is jail aware? Um, and I'm guessing we look at the other VNet, examples. Uh, inspecting VNet uh, without uh, having to trust that they have uh, the net that you expect. Okay. Um, well, if you're looking at set fib and following the example of route and if config, then I say just let us know what you find and then reach out for help if you need it. Well, I mean, one of the use cases from like a containerization point of view is that someone could easily just have a single binary jail. That's like mm -hmm. not uncommon. Uh, we've seen Jan doing stuff like that with his rsync, uh, having you know literally just rsync and rsync stuff in there, nothing else, right? Rsync, There's... the runtime linker, and it, uh, the sh shared libraries required. Both. Exactly, right? You don't have netstat, you don't have ifconfig. So I, I, I not even think... a shell. But not even a shell, right? So I think that there is a value of having every base utility. That is that should be VNet aware to be VNet aware. So anything that is networking related. So we have route, we have if config, netstat does make sense to be in there, you know, um, as far as I can tell. So from like net, a, yeah. any, almost any uh, command you want to use to inspect system state and it takes an interface name, uh, something to look out for. Okay, it's a little off topic, but it's a totally valid topic broader in the bigger scheme of things. So yes. let's keep inventorying what either has jail support or deserves jail support. And I say we move on. Uh, and Michael C., uh, while on the topic of what's going in, uh, any news on ABI fallback? And its related review? And I probably you... just need to uh, okay. kind of probably just to prove it at this point. I've looked at it, look at it a little closer, but, you know, the concept looks good. The, the, the question is, you know, there's that stuff that's marked deprecated. I think we just undeprecate and move on. Okay, I'll note it as just about there. Um, yeah, I think so. Cool. Great. Well, then between vacation, you name it, et cetera. Great. Unless is that something we absolutely critically want in um, 14? Just thinking out loud. And for what it's worth, you insiders, have you heard anything new on where we are at uh, with 14 schedule and open SSL and all the usual things that block a release? The last I heard is they, uh, they were within a week, a couple of days ago of getting a schedule so a schedule. Okay. that means it's close enough that they can actually put dates on it and so the code slush is probably still a, a week away at, at least but uh at least you know they're they've got enough open ssl that they feel they can add time add the time frame back in but it's not in yet okay got it uh uh, Michael, see if there's anything that you can think of to massage on those reviews to make it easier for Jamie. Go for it. But otherwise, oh, and there's a work in, oh, WIP schedule here. Thank you, Dave, for that. So, okay, we'll we'll just do what we all can to get that in there. Uh, thank you for that. Okay. Uh, any other topics, uh, for example, Goran, Nick, and Daniel, who have missed a few meetings? I'm, there must be a better word than missed. Have not had a chance to join. Um, anything before we jump into perhaps some documentation? Nothing exciting. Nothing exciting. 
Uh, Nick, anything exciting? That's our new metric, exciting. Nope, nothing, nothing for me. Daniel? Actually, I do have a question. Okay. Um, while we are with Jamie, I tested a new patch with include. And include has a quirk. The jail utility itself behaves as we expect it to, but the service doesn't. Uh, the service always finds the dot com file and, and parses it. Uh, so what I found is that if I declare global parameters, then include the jails, uh, and jails have really just a little bit of, of ID and Mac, for example. Um, mm -hmm. When I start them with the service, they won't start because the... Um, so I did set the, testing today, if you want my internals. Sorry, what? I did a lot of testing about the service for today, uh, today and I, 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 I figured out what works exactly and what doesn't work exactly. Is that in some shareable form yet, or you you two can connect? Well, basically, is what what you want uh, is that in a jail conf you're only including, and whatever definitions or are following, they should be in a, a jail conf D or some include file or, or something, because that's where the service is gonna start from. So is there any way to make it not break the old behavior and switch to service being a little bit more aware what's going on? Service so, being, so the RC? Script then, or so the magic in the rc.d script to uh, you pick the right jail.conf could be a problem because if I remember correctly, the rc.d script include at least the version in 13 includes some uh, support to pick the right jail.conf if you have a jail list. Uh, and then yes, um, that magic is working against us, sure. Exactly. Yeah, I hadn't even considered the uh, the configuration. I'm, I'm still used to the uh, days when the configuration in the RC script was one file. I'd forgotten that. Uh, yeah, we done this. So it's trying to include the same things twice. I have an idea, yeah. and um, I'm That'll just giving the idea to to make it as short as possible. Uh, J J Jamie, you there was the flag I think dash D for dump, which dumps the configuration with a delimiter. Am I right? And uh, is that like, is it aware of your include flag? It, it would be because it just reads the, does the same function, read the configuration. Yeah. That's it is perfect. not aware, it's aware of the configuration that is included, it is not aware of what files might have been included. Okay. Well, I mean, the easiest way to solve this would be just modify the jail service. And uh, instead of it, so when you do jail, sorry, service jail start foobar, it will look for foobar.com in three directories. Sorry, one file, one directory, and one file blob format, right? All I can do is to make that simpler is whenever that command is executed, go over the main jail.com and all the other directories, generate the dump file, and then execute that. I mean, that sounds like the easiest solve. But I, I do think it's a topic for the next week, since today we want to do like a docathon kind of thing. Yeah. I, I, I'm getting the idea. So you, you stop at the first one that actually has a comp for that jail. Yeah, I could look into that. It is something that needs to come in before 14 then to make this work, because I don't want to break anything. But the worst case, we can scream about it in the documentation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but try to get past the worst case. But at least that does tie it in with the uh, subject of today's meeting. <laughs> smooth, very smooth, nicely done. Um, <laughs> that said, uh, shall we document that question? Okay, so can you explain to me, like I'm five, the 
old syntax and new syntax can create what scenario? Um, from what I see, and this is, I think, is helpful that I say this because that makes sure I understand it, <laughs> that uh, the RC file looks for the jlconf in different places. And if you have something that has a master RC file in one place and then includes it in another place, it can try to get both files in and, and get a duplicate of the configuration, which is invalid. And that's, that's what I'm seeing. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yes. basically. Okay. Or, or, or the literal short format would be the jail service is not include aware. Yeah. Normally it doesn't need to be except in the, except I think in the case where it might think that a file that is included is one that it needs to run explicitly. Um, the problem is that it, it um, can provide the jail.conf path to the jail command. Uh, will not use the default jail.conf, but the jail specific one. So if you have uh, something done, something like sysrc jail list, it will look for something like etc jail dot d dot foo dot conf or something. And if that's what you're including from your jail.conf, uh, things get interesting. Or you have, de depending on which is to use the global jail.conf, which is supposed to define all jails, and it adds something, and the snippet is still a valid jail.conf, you get the problem that you may miss something. So in some cases, you will only have a subset of your jail configuration, and if it's supposed to inherit some global defaults, those would be missing. Okay, this sounds like something we're going to need in written form to really understand what's going on. So... And I think maybe right now, now we table this until like, till we, I don't know, it needs its own presentation, I think. So an entrepreneur, it sounds I'm, like you documented quite a few things about the behavior. That's yes, correct. yes. I mean, then, I, 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 did, I did most of the last edits on the jail service. Okay. Then maybe you and Jamie and the concerned parties just work together and try and okay. vocalize what what edge cases there are and where you can hit a wall with this uh, is not the is not dot including where. So this makes this is quite tangible that the RC service might need to be adjusted to be aware of well dot include behavior. Okay. Okay. So a uh, dockathon. So <laughs> our What's idea up, was. Yes. So our our idea was we split into multiple groups that would work on the man page, the uh, wiki on FreeBSD wiki, the handbook, and the Wikipedia article. Because our Wikipedia article is also in a sad situation. And if people look at the Docker, you know, Wikipedia article, it's like, oh, so this thing is amazing. And then you look at the FreeBSD GL and it's like, oh, this thing exists. You know, Goodness. like there's yeah. a major difference in the first glance experience of, of, of these two things. So my idea is we can split into these groups, whoever has, like I have no experience at all with the man page and the handbook, but I can do work on the wiki and the Wikipedia. So whoever has experience in what, let's divide into groups, see, also understand what the purpose of each of these things are, because that's also a bit problematic, right? Um, the, what is the goal of the wiki is supposed to be? What's the goal of the handbook is supposed to be? The handbook was supposed to, I mean, you would, guys would know better. And then the manual, what's missing in the manual? What is um, extra in the manual? What's what's outdated in the manual? If, you have, if we have anything like that. And document all of these. We don't need to do the changes today, but we need to get something started today. And then we can do this every once in a while in, in order to make the documentation and the handbook and the wiki all better. Which reminds me, do, do, do anyone here has wiki access? Yes. <laughs> okay, one, two, anyone else? I probably do. <laughs> okay, because they keep adding and removing the accesses. I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, oh. yeah. My, I still have an account, but it can't modify anything. Interesting. <laughs> um. And then on top of that, I'll add priority, given that the in-base documentation 
could gently take priority, especially with the looming release. Um, and Dave, you mentioned as a user concerns on the manual page synopsis. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's just maybe make some quick teams right here. So manual page, yeah. uh, Jamie, Dave, uh, and I did type these things and they'll eventually show up on screen. Come on, you can do it computer. Uh, Dave, who else is specifically either qualified or interested or motivated on the manual page? And if you show a hand, I'll probably not see it because I need like an entire display dedicated to that. <laughs> uh, anyone else or just you two so far? Might be all it takes. Might be all it takes, cool. Um, then let's say handbook is one of the trickier ones because it's so uh, 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 meticulously formatted. And that has its own kind of learning curve and uh, barriers to entry versus a wiki. So is anyone uniquely interested in the handbook and its broader approach? I know, for example, like Daniel, you, you're very much working in production. What would be useful to your team members? Because in theory, you could just say, hey, read the hand handbook page and off you go. Stop asking me a question. But I don't think we're there yet. I also just as a side note, I think the handbook also needs like a history chapter. It's like, hey, we didn't used to have a jail utility, then we got jail utility, then we got a jail service utility, then we got a jail config utility. That's why this is how it looks like. Because people usually say, why is it built this way? And then we have to say in a simple word, you know, legacy, not because we wanted to, but because we had to. Indeed, yeah. starting at Chirrut, et cetera. Go ahead, Jamie. No, just in agreement. <laughs> uh, so we have interest, but not from any individuals, correct? Uh, Wiki. Wiki. I, mean, I probably ought to do handbook, but I'm not interested. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Well, that I I would hope you're open to questions from those who are interested, and we'll together as a team get us ahead. <laughs> oh yes, great. So uh, that said, uh, uh, wiki wiki. Now, what's wiki. The, this one? As you say, purpose. Uh, what is the purpose of the wiki? Is it tips mm -hmm. and tricks? Is it yes? Uh, I what else? I, I I I think it should look more like the Dtrace page. Like the Dtrace page has a very good design in the sense it has, this is what Dtrace is. Here's a single line example. And then here's a whole page for basically almost 90% of what you need. Not everything, but 90% of what you need. I think we need like a wiki page that kind of stands like that, right? The jail examples, a list of jail utilities, uh, jail get, getting started. And uh, I, I'm also interested in writing jail internals in, inside the wiki, as in how does it work internally? You know, there's this is called, calling that is called, mm -hmm. calling that, and then in the end you have kind of something that looks like this. Uh, is there um, a developer's handbook that might just warrant those, maybe? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, last time I checked our developer's handbook, seems like it was updated God knows when, so... I, I, I don't want to comment. Something. Okay, on so fair enough. But the wiki is a great place to incubate the content to be pushed out elsewhere. So I'm totally in favor of that. That's that's yeah. quite effective. Yeah. Okay, that is nicely described, which would be, uh, and I'll add to that, I definitely want to, and I've been doing it, uh, inventorying the jail aware utilities, et cetera, and even packages mm -hmm. and you name it, just like uh, UCL, Libexo, where are we at? Because we, we tout these features and then often we don't know uh, Mecca was you who com commented like, wait a minute, if config has uh, libxo, really? <laughs> Someone recently. Anyway, uh, uh -huh. so I'm definitely interested in that one. Uh, inventory, jail, or where And commands. when did uh, EF config gain libxo support? It would I be very someone... useful, but I haven't heard of it. Uh, check it out, take a peek. Um, okay, so I'll put my name by wiki handbook. It sounds like we, well, actually wiki should drive handbook in my book. If we, in my opinion, we should map out some of those key 
content points and then make them sort of pretty informal in the handbook. Um, Antranik, should I put you down with Wiki? Yes, sir. And other folks, who wants to get their name in lights here? If I can spell my name right. Um, Jan, uh, do you have a top point of interest? Wiki. Okay. And I see two uh, use cases uh, of the Wiki, both basically internal but publicly accessible documentation, like with how does this this call work? How are you supposed to hack on it? And uh, basically, how tos and tutorials, which have are useful to get you started, but not polished to the degree that they are ready to be included in the handbook or maybe too specific. Agreed. Uh, Goran, so Daniel, for example, Michael like C. the old uh, ZFS article with ZFS installation guides before the default installer handled ZFS. Excellent example. Yes. Uh, I'll just pick on individuals. Uh, Michael C., are there any of these that jump out for you? Uh, Nick, thank you for volunteering here or Yes, Emmanuel, Nick. Awesome. Uh, Daniel, I know you're a busy boy. Any topics of interest? I should should mention that I do have wiki access uh, and I have piles of notes that, that probably Great. could get in there. So okay. um, yeah, so we'll keep that in our, keep that in our back pocket and I, I'd love to love to help out when I uh, when I have time. Um, no, well, and if we give you the for me, framework to do it within, then that makes it easier for you. So yeah, uh, yeah, for right. sure. And I can I can deputize staff to help out and uh, and, st and stuff like that for sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, so my my sort of not necessarily urgent for for business, but something I'm working on is uh, doing an IPv6 rollout, which I guess it doesn't really have any jail specific uh, problems except for just making sure that uh, that MAC addresses are unique. Um, Public for... address detection timeouts. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've had I've had a lot of collisions over the past three years. I think I've had dozens, and I don't I don't have the a problem. Have, is I think that twenty, the, but there are only twenty four bits of entropy uh, because the upper three bytes of the MAC address are uh, fixed. Okay, and but I propose MAC millions. address management for the Beehive call tomorrow. Does that work for you, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, okay. Yeah, we don't need to. We don't need to get into. Uh, we don't need to get into that because that's that's definitely shared between all instance types. Um, but yeah, but there's. I don't. I don't think there's any IPv6 related issues and uh, that are jail specific that I can think of at all. And I trust the it tools just, that have been made works. jail aware are IPv6 aware at the same time. No, those features are off again now. Or at least okay. it should be. Great. Cool. Uh, Goran, any areas of focus that interest you? Well, mostly handbook, but to be honest, I don't know what's the intended difference between wiki and the handbook. Uh, as I mentioned, it's very helpful for the wiki to incubate content that makes it into the handbook for sort of longer term setting in stone. Um, I use the handbook for learning, you know, I was for, gonna say that. for sort of getting it. And then Wiki is good for doing, like getting just a, like a reminder or, you know, a quick example or something like that. That That's the way I, that's the way I use them. Like if I'm going to tell somebody to learn something, I'll send them to the handbook. And, and we then, have a gold you know, standard yeah. handbook page to follow the example of. The update page. Yeah, you know, I was going to say that too. Yeah, yeah the update it's, page. You I know, mean, the, the update from source and update with the tool. That page is like the one you always, always ignore, miss. right? Yeah. <laughs> no, one we I'm, I'm on that. 
yeah, I'm on that page quarterly. It's it's <laughs> really yeah, it's really useful. And I've changed the way I've done things in the handbook, you know, reminds me, you know, of my options and stuff like that. Um, a, a wiki question, and this is a noob question. Do we have a talk page on our Moin Moin wiki as well? So like if, if both me and Daniel, we have a lot of notes. I'm sure Jan has a lot of notes too from our production users. Maybe we can, instead of cleaning up, we can just like dump everything to a talk page and then clean up and bring it back, you know, like just like we do on Wikipedia. Yeah, if you're not check. Patient, you can at least create a scratch pad, which is linked to. Because I still can't use our wiki. It's a weird one. And if it's not obvious, I just like Google Docs as a dumping ground and then refactor back out as time permits. Um, okay. That's a good start. Now, uh, Jamie, Dave, and Nick, do you have a mechanism, be it Zoom-like or otherwise, or your platform of choice, Jitsi, I don't care, to get in touch with one another? And is this a good time to do it? Um, Unless Zoom has some new breakout feature I'm not aware of. Go ahead and show you. I don't know who Nick is, so that's going to be very difficult to get in touch with him. <laughs> Hello, Nick. Uh, so I, I stepped over you, Jamie. Go ahead and repeat that. I'm sorry. I said, you know, it's, it's definitely time to uh, come up with something. So if we don't have something, we'll need to have something now. Uh, I, I go is not bad. Okay. Uh, we do it in, in, like in a fabricator review. Uh, is that wow. going to work? Jail docs. Because it's super easy to pull it in and to publish it and check that the changes look legit. I'd say it's almost step two. Maybe step one is just take almost like I've done here, marked it up, quickly bang through it, and you know, even if you were to like talk over Jitsi or your platform of choice, and then you know, push it around, then okay. get into a review. Yeah, I mean, if, if Jamie's going away on vacation, uh, that's next week out. Is it also, are you, are you away for more than a week? I imagine it could. <laughs> Documentation <laughs> is not something that's going to be held up in code slush. You're not going to say you can't document things anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. We, we know the right people to sweet talk them. Um, so why don't we look at this when you come back? And, and then interim, I can make some progress. I just need to have like a one line description of what each of those things right under the cursor actually are. Because you went through this last time and I didn't make notes. Um, like you said one with legacy and then I can do a fair review. Um, Nick, I don't know how to reach you. So uh, you have to let me know. Go ahead and uh, Nick, drop something in chat if you could. Yeah. yeah, what what do you prefer? I don't care. Uh, I, I'm imagining giving a rule in different time zones and on holiday. Um, email is pretty good. Um, but okay. what I was thinking of, start this, do a fab review, and then post the fab diff for people to comment on. And then by the time Jamie's back, I'll have written enough stuff that it's worth him reviewing it. Yeah. Um, Sounds so good. In the yeah. Interim, yeah. Email is good. And then fab. Awesome. Cool. If someone uh, could uh, get me a wiki right access, I would be able to dump my uh, craziestjail.conf examples and clean them up and explain them to myself and then others. Yeah, awesome. I can ask for that. So my account uh, uses my personal email address. And it has existed for years. I don't know why uh, I lost that. They had spam problems, like like always. Uh, but why do you activate? Who knows? Old Who accounts. Knows? Yeah. Okay, uh, Dave. Do you have any quick questions on that syntax? Like, has been marked up so far? Because it sounds like if if two out of five are described is it something like each of these lines just needs a one answer from one line answer from jamie yeah exactly yeah um, like one of the legacy oh you've done that in the bottom and in, in, in your in the small font let's try and make it bigger 
Um, yeah, so what's the difference between those three that aren't already there? I understand the first one um, and the last one, or the second to last one. What, what's the difference between these other two in the middle? Let's see. Well, the one in the, you know, the uh, second one, the one with the dash R, I mean, that's, you know, this is how you remove a jail, so it's its own command. Also, that's, if we go them line by line, there's the one, create a jail without a config file that I get. The right. next one is explicitly then, about removing, is it, or? It's remove jail. No, the, um, no, the next one is create, modify, remove with a config file. Oh, so the difference is now you have to have the config file. Okay. Right. Yep. And the next one has the option to remove without asking nicely. Yes. And yeah, well, the next one yeah. is remove with or without a config file. Yeah. Get rid of the, the damn The thing. dash capital R is just, you know, it takes a JID and kills it. Yeah. The dash little r, I mean, it's really, the dash little r is part of the example above. It's kind of redundant there. Yeah. But, you know, there's the two different ways to remove it. So we might want to clean that up. Cool. What I'm proposing is add a couple of notes just like this and then have actually examples down the bottom because that's really helpful. Yeah. Um, like yeah. All of those, all of those synopsis lines should have and an example the, line too. This, what is that now? One, two, three, the fourth one there. What is special about that one? That, well, that's mentioned. It's legacy syntax. Oh, I just reading over two lines, and then the very bottom yeah. one. Yeah. Very bottom one is the dump. It's ah, uh, this is the one to get the config of the jail that was running. So you can say, "Now I made it. Um, what would have I used to create it?" Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. I, that one okay. I'm not as familiar with because that was actually added by someone else. So I know it's there, but I since I didn't code it, I'm not really up on what it does. Let's see here. If I were to actually go where I've got some jails. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of an interesting thing because, yeah, it does not have a default separator for some reason. You always have to have the separator mentioned. Interesting. Not sure I would have done it that way, but it's done that way now. <laughs> uh -huh. I wonder if that's a small feature to add, which is a default separator. And of course you can add one and I'm guessing the flag from cut command was taken. Let's see, D for delimiter. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, might do it. It'd take a, you know, just be able to say dash E without a separator. Get off gets uh, kind of funny when you have things that work with or without arguments, but you know, something could be done. Sorry, I lost the audio. Um, for a bit there. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, feature idea default. Cool. That, that's awesome. I'm sure um, Nick and I can work with that. Okay, um, the, these are, that's one line essentially, right? It happens to be broken. Yeah. Okay. Um, then uh, Dave, does this get you your nudge in the right direction? Yeah, that's perfect, yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, dare I say you two, three, either break off as in meet right now with something like Jitsi or just talk in a week or whenever the whenever Jamie's back or do you're going to be awake whenever I'm back because okay. the reason I'm not quick to answer some questions is just because I'm actually packing right now <laughs> understood <laughs> cool well by the uh, way um yeah, get blame says Eugene Grossbein at least checked in the dashy I don't know if he did it on behalf of someone else let's see here It doesn't mention anyone's name in the commit, so. Okay. I 
down. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably who to talk to. Eugene without a final E, E-U-G-E-N at FreeBSD. Oh, thank you. E-U-G, Eugen, is that correct? Is yeah. that in there? Okay, got um, it. Uh, uh, Antonig, if you wanna do the invite, great. Yes. Or I can do it. They might wanna be on the calls for what it's worth if they're still working on jail, just saying. Okay. Uh, that, that's uh, almost as much as one could hope for regarding the manual page at this very moment. Thank you. Um, shall we similarly shift gears to the wiki? Just to kind of inventory where we're at, if anything. Um, so wiki, uh, I'll, I'll go with the, first of all, in the introduction, it says jails were introduced in FreeBSD4, and that's it. I think it needs a longer int introduction. Second of all, there's like a list of patches in the wiki page. I think we should remove all of those. It makes no sense to have list of patches on a uh, wiki page. Drop the wiki page in uh, chat, and how about I share it out? And yes, I'll, sir. There you go. I'll, I'll unshare it. Get perfect. Yeah, okay. That's a real e easy uh, URL. Thank you. Um, let me think how to do this simultaneously. Plus that, that, and then kind of break this sucker out. Maybe I can. So do you see minutes or do you see wiki page? We see wiki page, it's good. Perfect, great. Let's then, I'll try and do minutes separately on another screen. Okay. Um, and, I very much mean let's capture your feedback as they're, as you've got it or else we'll lose it. <laughs> yes. I'll okay. So that. then scrolling down, uh, do, 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 go to the wiki zone. Okay. I'm geared up. And is this history or what? Patches. Wait. The jails page starts with patches. Is that correct? Yes. That is no, yeah, actually not... <laughs> actually technically it starts with introduction and by introduction it means like oh. when it was introduced <laughs> into <laughs> that's quite the history okay <laughs> who do okay so yeah that's barely a history that's uh, weak history and then it does have a structure patches future plans which let me guess that was written a long time ago and mentions virtualization which is orthogonal more information we're talking handbook which is good. Manual, good. Mailing is good. Okay. Oh, and I see your point from here was Wikipedia page, which might yes. be more harm than good. So, okay. First off, I'll say patches absolutely does not belong there. It's way too yeah. internal. Um, future plans. Do, 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 do. 2007, looking good. Okay. <laughs> uh, move patches. Uh, I think that was in kindergarten. <laughs> okay yeah this uh, in a super quick read is any of this still valid some are okay i i think i think all of these should be moved into different pages like we should have a slash patches for where we can move the patches into there we can have a slash uh, future or roadmap where we can move the things that are not done into there and then the rest of it would be uh, introduction into jails, as in, you know, here's what the basic jail looks like without a config, most important, right, right? like right. without a config, just using the command line, then using a config, and then finally using the thing, what do you call it? Um, and maybe a couple of images. I don't know why our wiki doesn't have any images. Also, mm -hmm. should it have any images? Good point. Because there are very good graphics about FreeBSD jails. Uh, from like 2007 DEF CON talks. <laughs> okay, Antronig, I will say, I say we just pull out the probably three valid things here, move them to the jail call ecosystem and then push them back as appropriate because a feature just hiding away on a wiki, another wiki page is not progress. <laughs> so that said, I don't know if Daniel, we have you to thank for net graph based jails, but 
there's some good content, totally out of context, but well formatted and beautiful and meaningful. Um, known issues. And um, a bit weird uh, of a network setup, even if it's working. So, Jan, it sounds like you have comments on the net graph setup. It will oh, work. Improvements. It's just uh, strange because you don't have to use a net graph for bridging. And I, as far as I know, there is, there is no performance advantage unless you need net graph for something else. It's just a complication. Okay. Uh, Personally, I think it would be like if we go step by step, right? Okay. We would go like no config command line, then config command line, then complex config, then net graph, sorry, then VNet uh, with um, ePair and then VNet with net graph. So a user can have a complete perspective. And since this is a wiki, then we can have sub pages with deep dive as we need. So, you know, DHCP, complex networking. Uh, stuff like oh, there is content out there by the way like on blog posts and everything there is a lot of content we just need to bring it all in here and make it wiki formatted um i, I wanted to ask a couple of questions in here uh so first of all we have these jail management tools in here that, that you can see um my question is do we keep those or do we delete the list and only put the ones that are currently work we you know exist like cbsd exists bastel exists uh, crate, I'm not sure it exists anymore. Easy jail is pretty much deprecated. You know, like the list goes on of the things that should be in the jail management. Like a user should not look at easy jail and say, hey, that's easy jail. Maybe I should use that. And then be, oh, this is like not working. This hasn't been updated in a decade, right? Well, like, so, so the user experience would, would, would come first in that. Uh, that's my thought on jail management utilities. Definitely. And I... That's a pretty I good also list. Think, Go ahead, I, I also think. Yeah, I also. <laughs> I also think that this that this list could be could be misleading to somebody that's just, you know, learning about jails and and reading it because jail.conf is really easy now. It's actually, honestly, a lot easier than some of these options here to to get, uh, you know, to get a, a pretty functional jail environment. Especially with the like the user user share examples jails, there's like a, a couple little utilities there. You pop them in a jail conf, and um, you know you're rolling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. Like a user should know that when they're using these utilities, that they should have a specific reason for that. You know, uh, that that's also a good point. Um, that we also need to let me see. I have a note in here notes and some are uh, definitely needed deprecating because it's an overwhelming list but there's some at least it's good content go ahead on for nick oh sorry uh, and the comparison page uh oh comparison in, you know, to docker docker okay yes docker podman whatever it is on linux these days uh it's like this these are the things that we do these are the things that they do this is what we do better this is what they do better these are some jail utilities that can imitate what Docker does. Now, that's a very valid point for a jail utility, you know? So a, a comparison page is definitely needed. Um, and, and finally, the list that you made, Michael, which is, you know, um, jail aware utilities. Like for oh, people yes, to okay. understand oh. that PKG understands jail, PS understands jail. These are not like random things in the air. Uh, that could go both into the comparison and to the actual Wikipedia page itself. Uh, so like, this is the bare minimum for a user to look and say, hey, jail is nice. Like, <laughs> uh, by the way, this does bring Thanks. me, Mecca, uh, you had a lot of experience in this. Do you think we can have a page called jail, jail free BSD jails for developers? Like, you know, you can easily tell a developer why Docker is cool, but can we have something like that for jails? Because most of the, let's be honest, most of the jails users are sysadmins, they're not developers, but like, is there a content that would give value to developers? Maybe, and I'm gonna say, yeah, there's my tool for it. Probably, Raggy, right? Yeah. Does, yeah, probably a jailer has something to do with it or is really close 
But that's true. true. Yeah, Jailer has some value, not all, but some <clears throat> value in the automation process. Gorian, what's the name of your tool? Raggy. Let me wait. It. Basically, anything that uh, doesn't require changes Thank to you. the kernel ABI could be done in a jail of a, as, or it doesn't require change to the kernel at all, but probably bad. So most user space development can be done in a jail without risking your workstation. That's good, you know, zoning. I, th I think yeah, they would understand that term, yeah, zoning. Multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy, yeah, exactly. Which is more normally treated as an operational book, but it's also a nice way to keep your development environments separate from your login environment, let's say. Okay, this can be basically your most languages like PIP, uh, Python has PIP, Ruby has Gems. They all have this concept of a virtual environment, but Jails are virtual uh, developer environment which works for any language, including C. Mm, right. So you can yeah, not worry like, about like... conflicts with base packages and so on. You can just go wild. That, that's a good point. So for example, we would have an example where, you know, if you're doing PKG install a Python package, then you do PKG install the same Python package, but with a different version. Now it says, hey, I need to remove this Python and install that Python. Yeah. And people are going to be like, what the hell is this? We may so we can give an example of that. So many FreeBSD developers are by, it's almost a meme that FreeBSD developers have show up with MacBooks, running Mac OS, not FreeBSD. And because of that, we may overlook the point that if you have a FreeBSD workstation as your development platform, just installing random packages during development can break your desktop because it may say, oh yeah, you want to install Qt6? No problem, let's deinstall the conflicting Qt5 package. One second. A similar, simple everyday package management problems which show up during development. That's what got me here, uh, RPM hell. How do you get rid of that thing you just installed? So yeah, amen. Um, oh yeah, that's never where, where jails and ZFS works great. You can just take a snapshot uh, before you do something oh, and then you run ZFS diff on the jail to get the whole user land change list of everything you uh, contributed, the contribution you, had to accept into your project changed. I'll call that ZFS integration that might have need some representation on the page. I've got a list in the doc and I'm just throwing it in the chat, but yes, let's say ZFS is your friend. What are the great things you can do with jail and ZFS? Um, Apologies. Done stalled, what does that even mean? Anyway. Um, mm, sorry, what? What does done slash stalled mean in the wiki? Probably page? that it has been done, but uh, the it's patch much. died. Uh, okay. Waiting for reviews. Understood. Fair enough. Okay. So, yeah, well, we almost need an official wiki dumping ground. Okay. Uh, that said, in theory, I think this I. This list could... is old enough that a lot of it isn't just done, but overcome by events. Like we could have virtualization system. someday. Great. Um. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, the system five IPC uh, is no longer stored. So yeah, this is yeah exactly yeah. Like the, there are a lot of things in here that are and not it has accurate been for a while. And the most important user of the five IPC moved in array just as it got upstream. So Postgres no longer requires the five IPC. And FreeBSD has the five virtualization for jails. Yay! Um, here's a ridiculous idea. Do you like ridiculous ideas? Always. Great. Okay, so hold tight. I'm pushing. Why are you buttons. asking? Ah, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, I'll grant you that. I'll grant you that. Okay. Boom. 
pushy, pushy, click, click. Okay, what do you see? <laughs> uh, feature status. Uh, now the syntax is pretty brutal, but can we just knock some of the absolute dead bark and flesh off of this list? Don't or any do of it these right lists? now. Don't, don't do, do it right, it right now. now. Oh, you don't okay. want to block a call with seven people to edit a wiki table in a undersized know, window. But, okay, undersized. It's 42 inches. Come on. Okay. So it's undersized on my laptop display. Fine. That said, uh, I am, I'm happy to segue into a, a two on one, three on one, doing at least that to remove things like we're done, we're, it's gone. Oh, set fib. Um, speaking of which, Jan, is this what you were talking about? Yes, this is the command I'm Jail. talking about. So someone oh, uh, sorry. Uh, had that on the rate, but then why is it scratched out? I was going to ask what does setfib exactly do, but that's a topic for another day. Um, that's the one uh, sentence answer. Right you see it on screen. <laughs> oh, clear as so much. It changes the routing table uh, a command uses, okay. uh, a process uses. Oh, right. I totally forgot. Uh, speaking of that, uh, RCTL JL integrations. Yes. Right. Because yes. most people don't even know that we have an awesome utility like RCTL. But can you use RCTL inside a jail? Can you use RCTL because inside Because it doesn't make sense. It, it knows about jails as subjects to apply rules to. But can a, anything but the parent jail no. change the rules? So no. You wouldn't want to run an RCTL process started on the host attached to a jail. I didn't get that part. Sorry, go again. So normally, why these commands uh, gained jail awareness is that you want to start the command on the host and then have it attached to the jail so that it performs its operation within the jail, even if the command isn't installed in the jail, so basically. Mm. And this doesn't make sense for RCTL. I mean, uh, look, like- Un Unless we- What you're saying is that if RCTL doesn't exist, there are other tools to do that from inside no. the jail, right? For some things, there are no jails, for, uh, for non RCTL options. So, for example, you can't set an IOPS limit for IO operations inside oh. a, a recursive jail or yeah. something. This has to be done on the parent, as far as I know. Uh, on the root. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that a completely separate feature request of more no, RCTL that's not awareness? No, it's a feature request. Okay. It's just. Uh, Description of the state of the art, not okay. Not a pain point. Um, most of those tools are using ZFS. Is there anything unique in base to ZFS in jail? Yes, there's uh, the delegation. ZFS jail command, you know, for delegation. That's one. Uh, and the second of all is again, like we are here, all all of us are here. People who've been using FreeBSD for what a decade at least. But we this this page is needs to be written for people who are who are who have been using jails for like ten minutes. Yeah, like that that's going to be a huge difference, you know. Like these pages for people who've been using jails for like ten minutes. And Docker uh, users, hypothetically. Docker users, yeah, hypothetically. Yes. So you have the newbie wanting to learn. Yes. You have someone coming over from refugees. A bad place. <laughs> Refugees, that's a good one. Hey, I was a refugee. I'm a, I'm a system D refugee. So. You're an yeah. expert, yes. <laughs> Cross-training Linux refugees. Because maybe a cheat sheet, basically a translation. Yes, oh, thank you. A yeah, idea. a cheat sheet. Yeah. A cheat sheet would be very good idea. By the way, there there is a very good cheat sheet that has been around for like like fifteen years. It's called the Unix Rosetta Stone. Yes, it which has. hasn't which hasn't been updated. But, but it has like HPUX. Yeah, well, what? 
Yeah, and, and it's very useful. Like whenever I need to touch the AIX at our data center, I'm like, why did we pay $200,000 for this crap, right? And then, oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's even worse than a four letter word. It's a three letter word. <laughs> <laughs> Likes. No, yeah, no, IBM is the reason why you spent so much on it. God knows. Okay, so this is good. Okay, so we know what we need to do with the yeah. GLS page. That's already good. Uh, mm -hmm. My question is, do you think the wiki admins are going to come after us? Uh, like my, my, my home address is public. I'm very worried. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never had an issue, surprisingly. I would um, okay. prefer that we don't go crazy and remove even outdated stuff, but split it off into a sub page pages. about maybe Agreed. take it over. Yeah. And if you want to replace it completely, it's probably best to rename the old page and recreate a new page under its old name so that the URL gets changed, but the history doesn't get broken. Right. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it can be done if cleanly, if yeah. you have a permission to do that, at least. Yeah, so we'll have like jails slash patches, and all of those patches will be moved there and deleted from yeah, the main that's... page. So the main page will have the history, and the new page will have the patches. If someone wants to modify or update those, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a that, I think that's a valid way to do that. That's a good point, Jan, and it will keep the wiki history. And I just checked; there is no talk page, so we can throw out notes in there and then catch them. Unless if we want to create a slash notes page, that, that would be another story. Uh, that has been done or for, oh. or tagged with uh, WIP for work in progress. Oh, that's nice. Okay, yeah, that, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe we can have a, a notes page so people can just throw in notes and then we can come up and clean them and you know put them into the wiki as, as needed. Uh, th that sounds like a good idea. And let me see if I'm missing anything else. Um, uh, Michael, maybe at the top number zero would be like history. Just the bullet points of history is like, this is when we added, this is when we added this file, we added that file, blah, 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 stuff like that. So it would be like, One of people the, uh, know what happened. Wiki pages to look at is, is the uh, category how to. I'll mm -hmm. drop in the link. It's mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry. Full link, not just the page name. <laughs> yeah. And then we can integrate into this category how to Whoa. as well. Wait, what? Oh, cool. Yeah, it's the, there are some very good things in here, like the building on non free BSD. That's a very good wiki article. There are very good things. Uh, how to run Gen 2 in Beehive for similar stuff. Yeah. 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 So I, I, th uh, I think this is good. Nice. Uh, when, when somebody compiled oh. Gentoo in a beehive? Uh, I have. No. <laughs> I have. It, it's my Linux of choice. I'm sorry. It's like there's no other okay. even close. Hey, you were a Gentoo user too, right? Yeah, for a decade, but compiling it in a virtual machine. I mean, do I even have to say it? I will know your address and then. Um, uh, come on. Uh -huh. don't, don't go there. Wikipedia. You should get together, uh, set up an overlay network and share your disk CC cluster instead. <laughs> so this is this is the FreeBSD jail article, which is yeah. really not good. Like it's not it's, virtualization. Like that. It's, okay. Yeah, it's like it's like OS level of virtualization. I mean, maybe for most IT people it would make sense. Like the not... problem is that it turns into the point, but it's useless unless you know what it is. It's exactly. Similar to how you can give a one line description of Ansible as a orchestration tool working by concatenating idempotent uh, functions, but that doesn't tell you anything you couldn't have said in four letters. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. So, uh, so th 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 we we have that problem with the FreeBSD GL page. And uh, by the way, it's also not translated. I, I, we have a lot of people in different languages in here. Maybe we can also work on that one day. 
uh, free BSD jails. Uh, and according to the wiki rules, you can have the source cited from, you know, the other language. Apparently that's fine. I didn't know that. Um, so there's that. The history is pretty good, by the way, like as in what happened with PHK to doing that and that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, there, there are some problems with the links in there, specifically um, when it, where it does like right. the, the see also comparison of platform visualization software. And, uh, you know, it's I'm not sure if it's a good idea to have it in there um, in the sense that uh, it's not comparable. Everything else on that page is, is a VM system. It's not a containerization it's not system. <laughs> exactly. Right? Like, you, you, you don't have Docker in there, as far as I know, actually. Let me check. So, yeah, th these are the problems that we have in there. So, uh, maybe we can also focus on that as well. Actually, that's a good idea. What happens if I search for free BSD jail on Wikipedia completely, not the page itself? Yeah, it's on OS level visualization page. It's on vKernel page, which is not a free BSD thing. That's a that's not a free BSD. Thing. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's it's on the TrueNAS page. That's fine, I guess. So yeah, yeah. Th there's a list of things that should be fixed in there. Basically, uh, it's on PA PHK's page. That's fine, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, th 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 these are the basic problems with Wikipedia. The information is. Technically not wrong, but it's also not correct. <laughs> Is there a way to search it without landing yes. only on the page? Uh, uh, don't click enter. Oh, 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 so the suggestions? So just e, okay. And there oh, you go. here we go. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And it looks like I can save that. Search. Yes. Okay, great. I'll just add that to the notes. Well, good. Well, that definitely uh, maps out a lot of territory and every bit of lots of low hanging fruit and every bit of progress is good. Yeah. Um, and there are uh, some good free BSD members who are very good Wikipedia editors. Maybe we can modify and send it to um, one of the mailing lists and ask people to, you know, check the citations, make sure we didn't do anything wrong. Uh, yeah. It would be even ideal if we get like a Wikipedia star on, on the page, you know, like uh, this is a perfect Wikipedia article kind of thing. Well, that, let's try to get from completely stinking to <laughs> um, to better. Um, Ethernet yeah. VPN, what does that even mean? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, that, that's a product as far as I remember. Uh, or is it technology? Oh, really? I, I, I've heard yeah, of the product. Been that. Different kind of VPN technologies. Which channel Ethernet? Juniper, the Juniper, Juniper. List, which should be marked as a stub. <laughs> because. Oh, someone. So, how much history can you have for. I'm trying to figure out who's behind that. But anyway, so there's <laughs> that. There's a little bit of. Bit. Now you know. And 500 pages? Wait, oh, next. Good Lord. Okay. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Welcome. Uh, did someone just pop back in? Okay, That's yeah, a good I did. Cool. There's, there's like workload partitions. It's good that we're in there. Yeah. It's in secure level. It's good that we're in there. So, like, there's a lot of stuff that we're it's good that we're in there. Sure. Okay. Well, <laughs> patch to ignore reset tickets. <laughs> Okay, we are approaching, what was it, a moose jaw. We're almost at an hour and a half. Shall we yes. call it good there and just each do what we can on these things? Clearly within the wiki, there are the broad strokes, but there are countless little steps, such as inventorying yeah. those commits that are probably done, probably not a thing. Um, I, I suggest that we like loop back on this topic in three weeks. Right, okay. we do some work, and we loop back, and we do our updates. Yes. These are all very low hanging fruits, you know. Like it, yeah. it would just make the user experience oh. very good. Actually, so uh, resource limits has a page. Let's yes. uh, make note of all of these. And for what it's worth, this copy and paste might work to the doc. Fingers crossed. Um, note the how to page and that. 
And yes, uh, great. So jail. The GUI applications page is also very good, by the way. I totally forgot. I set up my uh, Chrome, Linux Chrome running inside FreeBS Digital with, the, with that page. So we have also good content in there. Does it still work in 2023? Uh, yeah, I mean, I use That was a hot like, topic with PCBSD, definitely. Um, for me, I, I, I did it like this year again, a couple of months ago, and it worked fine, no problem. And it's nicely you done. The thing Hello. I used it yeah, yeah. For was to run uh, Steam with Proton. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that too. And is it working fine on FreeBSD as well? It used to have a year ago or so. Oh, that's good. So I could play Borderlands 2 or so and to make sure I set up a second user for it because I didn't want to get the Bumblebee experience. <laughs> Okay, this page is not super valuable. Thank you very much. It's um, not valuable at all. <laughs> and it's at the top, by the way. If you go to the jails page, it's at the top of the page. Goodness. Okay. Resource limits. Good start. That's cool. Yeah, like it has info. Yeah, it has info. Mm. Oh, it's better than the last one. Okay, VNet jail. This is pretty good. Uh, it's, it's, it's not perfect. But, but it has it has the basics like the running of VNet and doing a DHCP inside the VNet. Okay, but it's different content from what we have on the main page already, which is the only decent content. Netgraph. Okay, so there's VNet and Netgraph. So pipe, potentially that wants to just be either here or on a jail networking page or something. And and what year was this? 2019. Okay. I'm a bit conflicted about that one because other than Start by uh, getting into bridging immediately instead of emitting that you can just have a virtual point-to-point -point interface. And then telling you once this pings, now you add the bridge. It always acts as if any bridging is the only way to use an uh, IP. <laughs> Routing doesn't exist. Uh, Point to point interfaces don't exist. Everything has to so, be okay. A, a here, here, here's here's the problem though, and I do agree with you by the way. But here's the problem: you have a developer who just got his uh, free BSD VM on Volter, DigitalOcean, whatever people use these days. Yes. Uh, they can't do uh, IP. They can't do bridging. Flows. No, they can. They do can't bridging. do bridging because as soon as they show up with a wrong source MAC address, their crappy no, host no, 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 will no. kick them off. So 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 ninety percent of people would be doing uh would be doing what do you call it would be doing uh, NAT with a bridge. Yes, but in that case, if you do NAT, you, if you already are using NAT, you don't need a bridge because to use NAT and bridging, you have to enable forwarding, and if you're routing anyway, why even put a bridge in the middle? That's it a good just question. slows right. things down. That 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 brings me a good question. Um, can you have a free BSD VNet jail that has network access with a the IP masked without a bridge? Uh, of course. With in about uh, ten thousand different ways. <laughs> uh, don't tell tell me one and the simplest way. The simplest one is to create an ePair interface. Okay. Yeah. Uh, put one in the VNet enabled jail and uh, route, uh, put a slash 31 and slash 127 or slash 64 on there, whatever it is your fancy, and run it. L just like you would uh, if you had a routed interface anywhere else. What do you do with the host part of the ePair? Uh, you put an IP address on there and make sure that it's up. So I, uh, you would do something like this. Uh, but it doesn't have an internet access. <laughs> it, it does would, if you, uh, you net, probably. It does. If you route with, with IPv6 and DHCP prefix delegation, 
it doesn't even have to have a not in see, there. See, okay, so look, 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 I, I, again, I agree with you, but this is a, let's just say a PHP developer who just fired up a digital ocean yeah. VM. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what the delegation is. They have no idea what ranges are. They have no idea about any of this. No, but they, realistically speaking, they would have a range of IPv6 addresses they can use. Well, usually they have one. No, even uh, crappy IPv6 providers like uh, DigitalOcean uh, give you at least 16 IPv6 addresses per... Oh, really? Yeah. Well, and okay. they're documented in their web interface somewhere. Basically, you have this IP address range. Uh, so, so, so wait, each machine would get multiple IP addresses, you're saying? Via IPv6, of course, that's... How it's supposed to work. That's what I think. Okay, that's nice. Uh, in that case, you have several options. Uh, if you really want, if you can get a prefix, which is 64 or larger, the clean solution is to have one prefix per interface. Uh, for example, with DHCP CD, I've done this and it works fine. Uh, with uh, Smaller prefixes, you have to lie a bit and use an, an NDP proxy on the uh, Ethernet interface. So for, uh, just neighbor discovery proxy so that the host will respond to the address even if it's not configured on any of its interfaces. And then you can put a slash hundred twenty seven or slash hundred twenty eight on the e pair. I see. Uh, that works but it's not ideal. Okay. Well, I don't have to... You can, you can the assume problem with uh, bridging is that all of the bridge MAC addresses leak to your top of rack switches or whatever your outside network address. And you can easily overload the network if it really tracks this by having each tiny and feral jail uh, take up one of your precious cam entries on the switches. Mm. So if you have hundreds of jails on a server, it shouldn't take up hundreds of cam entries on the top of rack switch. Because the switch has to track all MAC addresses for all VLANs. Um, Michael, I have no more comments. I think we have everything ready in the document to- That's to... a huge step forward, awesome. But what we are missing is probably a kind of, uh, well, this is a bit of topic, but a tool to make it easy to manage uh, the bridging because the tooling is again, the mechanism is there. What's missing is a tool to make it easy to use. So Daniel has NetGraph Buddy and would it be that with different components rather than NetGraph? Yeah, um, NetGraph Buddy is the... So I, I, I've used NetGraph Buddy at Daniels and it worked like seamlessly, you could say. And it even it could even technically integrate with Beehive as well. So it, it's, it's pretty good. Jailer does network management, but Jailer's network management is very much opinionated. Where you, would serve, right. where you would do Jailer init network and it will automatically create a bridge automatically assign it an IP. And you can also say if you want a DHCP server where it would automatically install OpenBSD DHCP, DHCP CD, automatically configure it with the standard. That would changes. be great. I've, we've all yeah, that's what it does that. With, uh, it, it currently does that. It currently okay. does that. And it will also automatically add the um, NAT entry in PF. So the, the latest version 1.2 already does this. Uh, of of jailer, but I don't like it because it's not flexible. <laughs> it's uh, one of the yeah. things we may want to look into in that case is to build some tooling to feed a more modern uh, DHCP server, like for example Kia, and integrate dynamic DNS. Because if you have IPv6, that's a good idea. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, I would I would like to integrate Kia instead of Open uh, OpenBSD's DHCP CD, which is ISC. How's that spelled? How's it? A key EA, I think, or yeah. key AE. 
And other alternative, which is a lot easier to configure is DNS mask. It does everything you need. Yeah, key EA. Key. So, yeah, yeah. K, K E A. sorry, not key. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I, I still don't understand what Kia is exactly, but let's do that next it's week. A DH, love... It's the successor of ISC DHCP D. Oh, is that... interesting. It's, they uh, they announced an end of life date for the official ISC DHCP. Uh, it's only in uh, life support mode, basically. Okay. The one we are all using, probably. <laughs> Um, the NL Labs has their tools, which are kind of handy. I think I'm using that. Yeah, the, or not, not for DHCP, DHCP, but I'm thinking so DNS. Think. Never mind. Okay, let me put a link in there. Um, okay. So a question for y'all while last moment, like, is this committed or is this simply accepted from 2019? Uh, this, this is committed as far as I know. Wait, is there a... Little link there that... should be if you go down, there should be a mention of the commit. Yeah, that'd right? be great. Let's make sure it's there because I'm in my cursory reads, I'm still because I haven't seen that. I have seen this. Is it, it, isn't this the IP restriction? Uh, oh, it's not merged for 13. Uh, it, make it into 13. Not there. Someone it's kill me now. Someone kill me now. So who do, who's not here? We've got Dave. We've got Antrenig. Do we have uh, half the call here? Just like, <laughs> guys, really? Please. I'm going to quote, quote Dave here. Thank Antrenic, you, Dave. Um, where should I uh, deliver the uh, tools? Just ship it to your home address? Uh, <laughs> what, what's your preferred poison? Please look hey, at my home website. Uh, okay. I think I have everything in there, including my favorite poison. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Come on. Uh, it's still time. Uh, oh, stop. Just, uh, if, a lethal dose of whiskey, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Antrenay, uh, art bag, please. Or wait. Antrenay, you should have good Ararat. Um, Dave. Okay. I'm going to cry. I'm going to put this like in. Uh, separated here, maybe some clip art, but what the heck? I mean, that's not how it should be done. Is it still building? Does this mean this review gets, do we have to modify it to get it build tested or what? And is it still a, is it still a good feature, all things considered? Uh, Jamie, I hope you're listening and cringing at this. <laughs> I'm cringing because I'm thinking the last thing that I committed, I forgot to mention the differential number on it, so it wasn't it didn't show up on there. Could this have been it? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was, oh. I think it was the includes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does the review at least say, hey, done, have a nice day, celebrate? It does say that. It does say, oops, I forgot. <laughs> okay. So I'll just have this hiding in the dock there. And the minute, like, uh, we, we have a feature. Someone worked hard on it. There we go. And it just kind of sat there. And I love Dave's quotation. Let can we get this into thirteen? <laughs> anyway, I, I mean, uh, twenty thirteen, maybe I don't know, or twenty twenty one thirteen. We should ask. We should ask. Oh, you're um, back. I'm back again. So I just come back. Oh, we should ask Bjorn to um to do it. Okay. On that note, uh, ask. easy. Okay. Well, we've covered a lot of ground. And we're at 1135, uh, which is a square moose jaw from Portland to moose jaw, hour and a half flight. Um, that's my new metric of meeting length is <laughs> how far can you fly in the time? That's a good one. My used to be how, how many Pink Floyd concerts can you fit? <laughs> okay. Anything else? Final thoughts? Uh, yes. Final thoughts. Yes. Uh, thank you all very much. This was like really, really productive. And if we can do this call again in three weeks after we've done some progress, just to follow up and see how everything is doing would be awesome. And uh, uh, if, if uh, we, we have our internal mailing list, if anyone has any questions, let's just hit up there. So uh, anyone else can help as well. And uh, yeah, Mecca, you had other points. Um, uh, did anyone get an invite to that? One by one. 
Okay. Mecca, what? When I tried care a few years ago, it didn't want to start in jail, but it wanted to start on the host. Okay. So we might want to explore that. That's a good point. I'll, um, I'll, I'll start the One of there. the problems why DHCP servers couldn't run in jails historically uh, is that they use uh, BPF interfaces. Uh, but uh, if you unmask them, VNet may actually solve that. And the other thing is that you only need, really need uh, uh, the BPF interface if you have a multi home DHCP server, which has to know which uh, interface to reply on. So if you bind one UDP socket per interface, uh, you can write a almost perfect DHCP server with the one caveat uh, you can't know over the standard socket API which path a packet arrived over using only portable set sockets. Some operating systems have over the years gained different ways of preserving this and having the kernel at the headers and so on. But this is again operating system specific. Uh, all of the common DHCP software has already been written using BPF. So we're stuck with that kind of part. It's not really required to write it. It's uh, just UDP port 68 and 69. So. so point of order, I definitely can't make it next week. Um, we all have things to work on and that was very productive, especially if we fall through on some of it. Sounds good. I'll be driving next. Romance week. these uh, <laughs> these ready commits from two thousand nineteen. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. That was pretty darn good. Cool. Okay. Dockathon. Dockathon. <laughs> Happy Dockathon. Uh, let's see. Is it for um, making a jail more darker? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. So it's 18.38 your time. See you later. Good Great. Thanks. Take care. Cheers, Uncle. Goodbye. Have Thank a great you. vacation, everyone. Bye.